How do economists establish causality given that we're not allowed to usually run control trial experiments? Well, we use something we call an identification strategy, and that's what this video explains. We all know that correlation does not equal causation, but when you become a healthcare economist, you get a super sensitive radar installed on your brain that comes up with a million different reasons why any causal statement might not be causal. The relationship between education and health is a classic example. People will claim that if you increase your education level, that's going to increase your health outcomes. And indeed, there's a strong correlation between those two things, and it makes sense that if you get more education, you're better able to research health-related issues, and you're you have greater ability to read medical journals and things like that. So that makes sense for the causality to go this direction. However, it's also possible that the causality could go the other direction. If you have better health, maybe you're going to be better able to stay in your classes, better able to focus and make better grades. Therefore, having a higher um, Health, health outcome, or having a higher level of health could increase your ability to attain an education. And of course, there's many, many factors that are third factors that might be associated with both. For example, an ability to delay gratification might increase your chances of finishing college even when the going gets rough and it might increase your health because delayed gratification is what's required to forgo the cake and go to the gym. Um, other things like socioeconomic status are positively correlated with both access to education and also health. So there's many different factors that could be at play. How do we actually figure out which direction causality goes and how much of the causality can be attributed to one particular direction? In other fields like medicine and biology, they might accomplish this using mice and dice, where they get a bunch of lab rats and they randomly assign lab rats to a controlled or experimental group using the dice, where if they roll a one, two, or three, they're in the control group. If they roll a four, five, or six, they're in the experimental group, or they might flip a coin randomly. And in that way, they randomly assign these mice. Now, economists can't do this because it's unethical for us. But what we're going to do instead is use econometric techniques paired with some kind of random element that's analogous to the dice, to the random sorting mechanism. And we call this our source of exogenous variation. And exogenous variation has a history and a background apart from this, but for the purpose of talking about identification strategies, what really matters is exogenous variation is going to be our source of randomness that'll help us assign people to a control and an experimental group. I'm going to go over three different identification strategies, regression discontinuity, instrumental variables, and a natural experiment or differences and differences. 